as I go through this little book here, not little book, I guess it's kind of big, Scientists and Inventors. Uh, I wanted to look up, you know, stuff on electrical current and the guys that, you know, figured out all that stuff. And I stumbled upon the man named George Simon Ohm. He lived from 1787 to 1854. There's a, there's a picture of the dude right there. But, pretty cool guy. Certain uh, things I can learn from this gentleman. I have some similarities with him as well. He was ignored most of his life by scientists in his own country. <laughs> That's basically what a lot of uh, scientists I'm learning have hap happened to them. They've been working on stuff and scientists just ignore them. Uh, his dad was a mechanical engineer. He came from a poor family. And uh, over time, he experimented a lot and even made his own wire and his own experiments because he couldn't afford the equipment necessary so he just built the equipment himself to do the experiments it's really cool I think that's pretty cool <laughs> uh, he's famous for formulating a simple relationship between electric current voltage and the readiness of material to conduct electricity he was by far one of the most important people regarding taking the study of electrical uh, energy and electricity and making it into a quantitative study meaning you could use numbers to formulate things and put everything together in that regard I remember <clears throat> in the uh, in the little article there he had published his paper and instead of overviewing the experimental basis of it in full and just only going over that he mentioned the experiments that he did and very very little bits and the rest of his paper was dedicated to mathematical derivations and it said in the book that it was very uh it was a bad decision on his part because what happened is that the German scientists that read it, they just glossed over the experimental basis of it and looked directly at the math portion. And the math wasn't up to par apparently, which means that for the majority of the time, German scientists just ridiculed his work and ignored what the experiment was and what what the experiment actually showed so that I think can translate to my own experience I don't believe math is very important in regards to getting out the main ideas and that's why I'm focusing on the main ideas and completely ignoring math so I think it's good that I'm doing that because if I sit here and try to make a mathematical formulation out of star evolution there's no way. A math formula to explain how a star evolves? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Those things are so complex, man. There's no way one single math equation can explain all that stuff. Are you kidding me? Uh, he was actually an, an ohm here. He was, he was ridiculed so strongly that he was even forced to, to resign his school post. This is the guy that figured out or laid down the foundation for all of electrical engineering and he was ridiculed and forced to resign out of his school post can you believe that looking at a hindsight like who's the bright who's the bright dean of of teachers or the president of the school who thought that was a good idea to force the one of the founding people of all of the electrical engineering that you're not up to par. Well, basically, it was probably on the social, you know, constructs. He was ridiculed so much that it made the school look bad, so they had to get rid of him. 
That's how science is done, in case you didn't know. In 1842, the Royal Society in London admitted him as a member because they were like, oh dang, he actually discovered something really, really important and we're using it. So, you know, of course they were obligated to admit him as a member to their little society, to their little club. And being that 13, that 55 years old when he got admitted to that. And... In 1849, a full five years before he died, he was eventually given professorship at the University of Munich, meaning they eventually were like, dang, we messed up. Here's a full professorship at Munich, and you can just teach people about this stuff. So basically, make the discovery, write it all down, people focus on the wrong things that you don't really want to concern yourself with they ridicule you you get fired years pass and then you eventually get admitted back into the society again or into the into the club I call it the big club so basically that can happen over a person's lifespan I mean George here was alive from 1787 to 1854, so a full 67 years of working on things and having a roller coaster type. So, if any scientist can learn from this gentleman, it would be to work on your experiments, develop your theory to the best of your ability, because the truth is, you're not going to be able to determine if this has importance. And if it does have importance, people will still ridicule you and tell you how much of a idiot you are and force you to resign from your school post because people in large groups in social settings tend to be dumb. They don't realize that, that something could be important in their midst, so they just ignore it and they move on. Or they want to focus on something that isn't the main idea and they ridicule you for that and then they move on. So keep that in mind. The the social groupings of how scientists, you know, they deal with social settings is is what makes history, but at the same time it gets in the way of progress. So just, you know, keep that in mind. And if you want read more about this this gentleman I believe there probably is much more to it this is just a little uh, it just glosses over his life in a whole two pages I don't really think that does him justice so maybe I might look up some more information on this gentleman today is June 16th 2015 everybody have a good day